Hello. Welcome to Connie Martinson Talks Books. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Charlie, or Charlotte Pankhurst. Well, she led an extraordinary life. She was the first woman to wear men's clothes and become a driver for Wells Fargo Stagecoach, which lends itself to the title of this book, The Whip. It's written by my guest, Karen Kadazian, and welcome, Karen. <laughs> Thank you. Now, how did you first find out about Charlie Pankhurst? It's Parkhurst. Parkhurst. Parkhurst, oh, very close. Um, I was in my 20s. I was reading Cosmopolitan Magazine, How to Get a Man. <laughs> and there was this great article about wild women of the West. And I, um, I thought, wow, what an extraordinary woman. She, she actually, for 30 years of her life, yeah. she disguised herself as a man in San Francisco, the whole coast, up, up and down yeah. the coast of California. And when they got her ready for her funeral, they couldn't believe it. They, 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 re they said, she's a woman, yeah. this famous stagecoach driver. So all the doctors were running from San Francisco, Sacramento, come to see this body. Um, they couldn't believe yeah. it because she had killed the famous outlaw Sugarfoot, who robbed a stagecoach one too many times. Yeah. She was the first woman to vote in America as a man for General Grant. Uh -huh. she, um, she was amazing. She, uh, uh, whips, by the way, a whip is a stagecoach driver. Uh -huh. They were like the, 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 the top of the line stagecoach drivers, and they called yeah. them whips. Now, for I did know or uh, read about women who had been in the Union Army and in the Confederate Army, but I had not known about a woman who ro drove the uh, stagecoach. Right. Well, you're absolutely right. And not a lot of people know that, that during the, mm. particularly the Civil War, the, yeah. the, the con on the Confederate side, a lot of women, were, were, you know, disguises yeah. themselves as men and then went home and had babies. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Charlie, by the way, was straight. She had had a baby. She wasn't like, you know. Uh, she, Her home was what, back east? Her back, she was born in uh, New Hampshire. And she lived in Boston for a long time of her life. And then something terrible happened to her family, her husband and her baby. And she put on men's clothes and traveled around the horn to California. Kay. And 30 years later, she found the killer. I'm not going to tell you what happened. All right. So you have to read the book. OK, <laughs> but let's start with what did happen to her husband and baby. They were killed by the beginnings of the Ku Klux Klan. In, in Back east? Mm, uh, yes, yes. Um, you know, the thing is, is that it was a free, slaves, I have to explain that. It was uh, an African-American man. She, she fell in love with a runaway slave. Mm -hmm. Now, he was living in a free state, but there was this thing about white women and black men at that time, which were, mm -hmm. you know, forbidden. And so uh, they didn't mean to actually. They didn't actually mean, they weren't meant to frighten him. But he accidentally got killed. So she put on these clothes. That was the only way you could travel in those days. Mm -hmm. um, and went out west to find the killer. And meanwhile, because she was so good with horses, she became this amazing, in fact, if you go to San Francisco, Wells Fargo, there's a whole little section about Charlie Parker's. Yeah. Uh, this was, what year was this in America? Well, she was born in 1812. Mm -hmm. She died in 1879. After the Civil War. After, yes, and she voted for General Grant in 1868. Yeah. Now, how was she able to get, I, I mean, today we need ID, but what did you need then in order to register to vote? Um, in 1867, on the big voting uh, tablet of the time. Yeah. They have her name. And you had to go and just vote and, yeah. I mean, had to write your name and say where yeah. you were from and yeah. what your occupation was, and that was it. Yeah. You didn't need any identification. At that point, too, out west, there were a lot of so called criminals who would try to hold up stagecoaches. How did right. she handle it? Well, this Sugarfoot, 
this outlaw sugar foot. Robbed her one time, got away with it, and as he was leaving, she said, listen, you try it one more time, you're in trouble. And he laughed, and he did try it again. And she killed him. She was a very good shot. <laughs> you know, I never heard that name before. I only knew it from the Warner Brothers series, Sugarfoot. Yes. Now we know how they got the name. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is your first book. Well, I, I used to be a journalist for um, a magazine called Backstage. Mm -hmm. And I had an, uh, every week I would interview casting directors, directors, producers like James Cameron, John Woo, mm -hmm. and we put together, I was asked to put together all my articles. So I did publish a nonfiction book called, it's out of print now, but it's called uh, The Actors uh, Encyclopedia of Casting Directors. Uh -huh. But this is, you're right, this is my, as they say, my debut novel. Right. <laughs> How did you like writing it? It took me six years and mm -hmm. 27 drafts. Um, I'm one of those people that when I start something, I have to finish it. Mm -hmm. And it was easy in some places and other places. Like the ending. I didn't get the ending until like the 24th draft. Yeah. You know, I couldn't figure it out. Because this book is... In, on the title, on the front page, it says, inspired by a true story, mm -hmm. a novel. So what I did was I took all the facts about Charlie Parkhurst, and then I novelized the rest of it. Yeah. Because we, they didn't know she was a woman, so there are no photographs of her. There's n not that much about her, except in the New York Times, 1880, her obituary, it said, her story was so 